number one is not letting hotel staff know your needs before checking in. She says, in order to be the best guest you can be, it's helpful to hotel staff when you plan ahead instead of leaving things to the last minute. Um, and this is from Andreas Spove, uh, general manager of Rest Days Ottawa, a luxury hotel in Canada. When last minute plans occur, the hotel staff is there to help. Planning ahead will let your concierge know in advance um, things related to early check-in, check-out, fridge filling needs, helps uh, things that will help you serve you better and decrease stress on both ends. Even if it's a property that doesn't have a concierge, I think that it's always important to notate your reservation and just let the staff know what you're doing in town. Um, if you've got any kind of a special occasion, any kind of special needs, um, we kind of, I mean, at least if, if it's a nice property, they'll go through those reports and they'll see what their guests are coming in for and they will do their very best to accommodate um, and make that guest have a wonderful experience. Um, so I, I think that that's, you know, first and foremost, you got to let the hotel staff know. Um, and I think the more elaborate the, the situation, the more lead time we need. Because if you're going to ask for something like a fridge fill, we're going to need time to do grocery shopping and go up and physically fill the fridge. Now, if you have rare items in your grocery list, give us some more time to use, you know, a Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. We're going to need that lead time. And so if it's simple things like toiletries, we got you. That's on site. That's an easy thing. But the more elaborate the requests, like floral requests, for example, or birthday cakes, we're going to need time to prepare. You don't want to spring that on your vendor at the same time. You want, to, you want lead time for them as well. So I've got a story. Um, this is relative, relatively recently. Uh, I'm, I'm working at this property, and I've got a, uh, a VIP that's going to be checking in. And this VIP has... Um, a special request. There's a number of special requests, like a, a, a good number of them. I end up going to Whole Foods, purchasing all of these groceries, whether they, you know, fresh fruits, berries, granola, all this stuff. And part of the request was a Nespresso pod. And so while I'm at the Whole Foods, I pick up this Nespresso pod, I get back to the hotel. Well, my boss looks at the Nespresso pod and says, oh, this, is, this isn't this is the right flavor. Um, there's an Nespresso store and the only place you can get this flavor is at the Nespresso store. It's on the very north end of the city. And I'm like, cool. Guest is arriving tomorrow. This is fine. You know, so I literally uh, walk out of the hotel, flag a cab. Um, cab takes me all the way to the north side. I, um, you know, there's this whole elaborate process of me finding this store inside of this shopping mall. I get into the Nespresso store, I go to the clerk, tell them about the specific flavor that I need for the guest that's checking in tomorrow. And the clerk says, we are sold out citywide. The closest you're going <laughs> to, the the, uh, the only store that has this flavor is going to be maybe 30 miles north of here. I was like, mm. Do you happen to remember that forbidden flavor? I, I don't know the forbidden flavor, to be honest. I uh, don't have that off the top of my head. But it's, it's, a, it's an espresso flavor that was completely sold out citywide. And um, we ended up having to leave a card in the room that said, unfortunately, due to a nationwide shortage, um, the flavor that was requested is unable to be accommodated. However, we have a selection of some of the most popular flavors curated by the clerk from the Nespresso store for your enjoyment. So... Mm. That's a nice touch. Even if you can't hit the flavor that they're looking for, you can still back it up with knowing that they want that type of pod and then uh, as an assortment of flavors um, that they might enjoy that are most similar to the flavor that they had originally requested. That's truly the best you could have done. Yeah. Yeah, for the nationwide outage in Chicago. That was, uh, <laughs> that was really, I mean, 30 miles away, Tom. You could have just, oh, it's not. You, know what? you don't need to drive Listen. 30 miles at that point. You just got to <laughs> give them what, you, what you've got on here. <laughs> um, the one thing I don't like about this is that it actually gives justification for Tom calling hotels like three weeks before he goes there to find out all his information. But besides that, you know, it's, I love it. I love it. Greg's uh, always so going to roast me for calling ahead of time. I always call ahead of time. Every, <laughs> every time. Uh, Zach says, guest book the next day because it's cheaper thing and they can check it at midnight. You know, Zach, I got this a lot if we were sold out. 
it was after <laughs> like if i was working an audit shift we're sold out like when i was at o'hare sorry you know like we don't have any more rooms available and they go online they book a room like and they come up smugly i have a reservation i'm like oh let me oh i don't see it let me see the confirmation number oh yeah this reservation's for tomorrow mm-hmm. but it's after but it's today i'm like oh check-ins at three it yeah it's a whole song and dance we I've also seen game. it where they'll book on us, try to aim for a sellout date, book the day after because it's, content, it's completely booked. So they'll take the say you're aiming for June 19th and they take June 20th and then call Marriott, for example, and say, oh, we actually needed that for June 19th. I'm like, you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. You knew that you couldn't uh, that you couldn't book for that day. Was, Greg, that a, was, was that on a Friday night audit? That they <laughs> Most likely. Like that? Uh, well, you know what, Craig? At Hilton O'Hare, it, any day it could be a sold out day. I mean, you get a little, you get a little uh, snow flurries coming down, and all the all flights just delay or stop coming through. So that, those are tomatoes for the flights that get delayed because uh, <laughs> of a little snow flurry. Josh, welcome in. Thank you for the virtual yeah. tomatoes. Yeah, thanks, Josh. All right. So that's so, our, our topic. One of the things I've been seeing is um, using the app. So I'm I'm with Marriott. I'm at, at a Fairfield in Eugene, Oregon. And what we've seen a lot of is guests who do their requests, and they'll go right down the app and check every box. So it's like we know what they did when the request comes through, and it's four, 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 four of every possible toiletry and amenity item. And just like, <laughs> did you did you really have to? It's like right. a weird flex that people are doing who just got status. Like, come on now. Oh, that's silly. That, yeah. We should we should make our own list and add that one on there. <laughs> oh, at the end of this, at the end of this, I definitely want to throw in a couple of uh, of our own. Um, okay, so let's let's move on to not con- not sharing your concerns in real time. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I did the dive on the first one, so I, I'm gonna let. Oh, I, I can't even read that. So, <laughs> so, so, with not sharing your concerns, it says uh, Spove, who was the general manager interviewed, had one more excellent piece of advice on how to be a spectacular guest: share your concerns in real time rather than saving it for a review after your stay. I'm 100 percent in agreement on this. There's there have been many a time where I'll see a review after the fact. And think, wow, we could have resolved that for you. Absolutely, had right. you let us know. Like, had I had anybody in the operation been aware of what you were experiencing, we would have been in total agreement with you. We would have fully supported your case, and we would have taken care of and resolved, and then gone above and beyond and made that right. You know, it's it's um, unfortunate people. I don't know if it's people that have had experiences. Um, you know, negative experiences at hotels where they weren't very helpful and now they're they're just resigned to it or or what the mindset is. Maybe they're just thinking that they want to be polite and not say anything to the staff. Um, but you're not being polite because the staff is there for a reason. They're there to help you. Right. So um, for guests to not mention, especially if it's something very, very seemingly trivial, um, it's always a frustration point. It's always like, hmm. Wish I knew. It was always frustrating for me if I was working in the morning, checking these guests out, asking them how their stay was. And they say, oh, everything was fine. And then a few days later or the next day, a review comes through and it's, you know, this was terrible. This was terrible. I'm like, I literally asked you at the desk (laughs) as a manager, how was your stay? And you didn't mention a a damn thing about it. I've had times where I've got a negative review a couple weeks later and several workers have asked, how the stay went for the guests in a long-term stay. And then they torpedoed us when they got the review. And my staff knew, just it can emphatically remember the times they went to the guests and said, how was everything? Do you need anything? So they they were not happy to hear that. Michael yeah. says he hates it when guests do a complaint um, and he sees it on guest assistance. And then uh, it's on the same day that they checked out. And meanwhile, um, they could have asked to speak to him anytime during the day. Yeah, absolutely. That's I mean, that's it's always frustrating. Well, I remember. Go ahead. I was going to say that those are the type of guests that probably played that system a little bit. That just they know if they reach out to corporate, they'll probably get something out they of it. The compensation. 
Well, um, I, that brings up a question there. How do you feel in a position of authority when they go through the review process and say how terrible the state was? Do you feel that a degree of compensation should kick in there, or do you do as, as I do often and offer to make their next stay even a better stay, offering discounts and upgrades, whatever you can do, because they think or on time. Yeah, I, I feel like that's the better route to go because once they leave that review, I mean, you, you've they've already had a bad stay. So throwing money at them at that point doesn't really help anybody. But if you could bring them back and turn it around, then you know, then you can win a a, a guest for life. I will absolutely correspond with them. I'll t- spend the time, uh, you know, letting them hearing their concerns and letting them know why things are the way they are. I have guests who are upset that the pool is not a jacuzzi it's not 100 degrees I'm like, well, do i really have to explain this <laughs> uh, actually we are uh, we're about to be in jacuzzi season uh, with valentine's day coming up so get ready for those phone calls if you haven't already yeah do you guys have a jacuzzi at your inside of your rooms does do all of your rooms have jacuzzis inside of them i love that question i'm yeah. i'm really lucky not to have a jacuzzi suite here and I remember what would like at, at every property I had that had a jacuzzi suite, you'd get people who during tax season, you knew who they were because they came from small county towns around. And their splurge was always women smoking in the room in the jacuzzi suite. Like, here we go again. Yep. Yep. Around this time of year. Craig says that he always lets the property fix the issue. And when they take care of the issue, he knows he's coming back. That's a I love that. Back. Yeah. 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 But um, one thing I do want to mention about reviews is I don't think guests understand that also reviews on some major chains, the the ratings that we're getting, our grades that we're getting per se, and you know, our scores, they may dictate if we're gonna have like an on property or a virtual audit from an outside auditor that determines uh, our status uh, within a brand or within a chain. So there could be some real ramifications for us on how they score us. And so if they do all ones and then they expect compensation, they've also done some damage they don't realize. When I was um, managing at the front desk, I always um, highly kind of, I guess, I don't want to say hammered into the staff, but I always highly encouraged when guests were checking out to always ask them how their stay was and to really genuinely spark up that conversation. Um, to try to have a moment with the guests that are checking out and saying, you know, try to say the guest's name, thank them for staying, ask them how their stay was. You know, some guests are going to just drop their key and run. People are on, are late for their flight. That's understandable. But if they're coming to the desk to check out, you should be asking them how their stay was. And then <clears throat> if they say, oh, it was good, try to get a shoe in and just, you know, maybe ask them what they were doing in town or how they enjoyed it even further. Just something, try to spark that conversation because if you can catch the conversation at the front desk, then they're less likely to leave that review. They're more likely to bring up something if something happened. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been able to capture somebody that's said, oh, everything was fine. And then with a follow-up question, they they were able to reveal something to me that I was then able to make right. Um, So I think that that's huge and something that's kind of underrepresented is making sure that your AM staff knows how important it is to have a genuine moment and a genuine conversation with people, especially understanding that people think that they're trying to be polite when they when they say, oh, everything was fine. They don't want to cause a conflict or a confrontation. You have to make sure that they feel like they have a, a open forum to um, feel comfortable to say something. Sounds like passive. You don't want to be a passive Tom. Okay. You don't want to be a passive Tom. <laughs> the passive Tom from five shows ago that he's shed. I've, many I've, times I've evolved out of. <laughs> he's evolved. He shed that skin. I've shed that I, skin. I'm a big proponent of using that last question. So if you're doing a check in, it's the same logic as is there anything else I can do for you before you get settled in? Um, you really want to open that opening for anybody else who has uh, something to say in the family. If you see, sometimes you're dealing with a husband or, or a wife and you haven't heard from that other spouse, you want to give them all opportunity to ask the questions they need to ask. 
Um, maybe it's about the pool or the breakfast or fitness center or where the ice machines are or the Wi-Fi. If you can get it out of the way, then they won't say later on, I didn't have an opportunity or I didn't get any answer on this. Very nice. Awesome. All right. So we go down to the next one. Going down to the next one. Okay. Right. Well, this is this is in the housekeeping world, right? So let me uh let me, let me talk I'm gonna I'm gonna go full screen, full screen so you can maybe read. I, yeah, I can I can see that. So so using the wrong towels. If you wear makeup or get particularly dirty after an adventure, Stephen Fofanoff, uh, sorry if I mispronounced that, general manager at Domain Madeline in Port Angeles, Washington, um, shared that it's important to use the right towels to make the sti- uh, staff's lives a little easier. Use the provided makeup removers or makeup towels. Guests who use white towels to remove makeup permanently damage those towels, which increases the cost of staying in our inn for every guest. Luxury white towels are the highest cost items to replace when stained, and the smallest stains require replacement. Um, This, he added, is why hotels provide black makeup towels, and if guests are lucky, plenty of free aloe-infused, chemical-free, compostable makeup removing wipes. Um... Yeah, you know, I I um I do agree that it can definitely be a hindrance. But if how many cells have you been actually provide that in the room? I don't yeah, we have makeup it. wipes at the desk. Um, we don't have a specialty uh, facial rag for cleaning up makeup, which I love that idea. By the way, I've but seen I will this. say, go ahead. I was gonna say I've seen that. Was that a, in Reading, Tom? Do you remember? I think they have black makeup. Um, towels in, in Reading. I, I wasn't paying attention, to be honest. I, I would, if they did, I didn't notice. How'd you take your makeup off at night if you didn't use it? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, think that's how I know. That's how I know. Um, no, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure they had them. Um, but most I rooms know. I go to don't have that amenity readily available. What I'm most used to are the disposable wipes. They'll have those available um, on hand very easily accessible um i'm not asked them. enough for them i i see those very few and far between those requests i want that request yeah because my yeah. biggest replacements are pillowcases and washcloth and those are for the same exact reason it often makes um so hey make well, those, those makeup removing wipes ask for them mm-hmm. we've taught it even comes down to the point where would you start putting them inside of the room just having them in there I need it. Sometimes it falls into that brand standard uh, limbo that you do, just trying to keep yourself in, in you know, the good graces of the big parent company. Um, and they, if it was ever put as a standard, I would call that. Or same thing with the colored, the colored uh, washcloth. I love that idea as a makeup towel, uh, just because I don't like the idea of my laundry attendant sitting there trying to get out stains out of washcloths and pillowcases it's a waste of time and we do it way too often and we replace them way too often. So having some alternative um, and having guests embrace that, I'm please let's do that. Yeah. Maybe yeah, check to see if you can do the, the darker makeup towel because then they're less likely to damage it, waste the time trying to clean it, waste money replacing them. And you, you know, you're going to spend that money replacing them. You might as well buy something that'll, that'll last you for a while. Uh, I've seen the makeup towels at a few places, but most of the time there's not makeup towels. Yeah, I th- like I said, I think I've only seen it in one property, and I'm pretty sure it was the Double Tree Reading. Yeah. All right. So, um, taking out your aggression on staff. Oh. Excuse Passive me. Tom talking about aggression. It's important to remember, uh, even during the most frustrating moments, hotel staffers are likely doing everything that they can to ensure you have the best day possible. And that's why the staff from Bethany Beach Ocean Suites Residence Inn in Bethany Beach, Delaware, wanted to remind everyone to try to keep their cool when interacting with employees. It's disheartening when guests get upset with the front desk when they find out their requests they made ahead of arrival, connecting rooms, full preference, view of upgrades, early check-in, etc., was not possible. The hotel staff shared, we do everything we can to accommodate a myriad of requests from hundreds of families daily. When we can't accommodate a specific request, please know we've tried our best to make it happen. Um, I would agree with the sentiment. I don't know if it's necessarily, if it's necessary to bring up that we do do it for hundreds of families daily because it's almost making an excuse for 
kind of following through on the pro uh, promise every now and then. Um, but I would say like whenever, and I've said this before on the show, but whenever I've been dealing with an issue, whether it be connecting rooms that weren't confirmed and trying to figure out how to make that happen, especially if it's a last minute request, the guest is just checking in now. They never mentioned the um, connecting request and now it is a make or break moment. Um, I always, especially if the guest starts to get heated, remind them that I'm on their side. I'm on your team. It's you and me versus the company. It's you and me versus the hotel. Um, and I know it's a lot of people disagree with that framing because you want to be always, quote unquote, the representative of the company. But I'm trying to take a step out of that boundary and say, hey, let's work on this. I'm here to help you. Um, I understand that your problem is affecting you deeply right now. And I'm empathetic to that. Um, and I completely agree with you. So let's, I've got a number of tools at my disposal to help you. And I'm going to try each and every one of them um, and try to get you to, to try to meet a resolution where we can find an amicable middle ground or even to you know, go above and beyond to, to bring you that perfect stay experience moment. So um, I know I that- will, I'll add something there is that uh, uh, for people who are line employees or a middle management, uh, don't feel like you have to stand there and get yelled at. Uh, you can bring a general manager in to get yelled at. I mean, you, you are not paid to be a pincushion. And I don't want to see somebody to ever feel like they need to walk off the job or they're just getting constant shrapnel for something that's not their fault. Um, and I will say there's been so many occasions in which stepping up to the desk as general manager, tone changes. And I, I feel bad for my worker that takes it before I arrive. But I do see that de-escalating as a general manager is very different than de-escalating as a line employee. And I want those line employees to not feel like they're in it alone. Yeah, yeah, 100%. If you're not able to side sidestep it, then it's always good to get help. For sure. Yeah, yeah. because a lot of times, like you said, as soon as a manager walks out there, general manager, or even just the next manager, they, they automatically change their tone, right? Because they, they want to get what they want. And they know if they yell at the manager, they probably still won't. Um, and advice for your managers, too. You also don't necessarily have to do it. If that guest will not come down, I've asked, I've told them, if you're going to talk to the staff this way, you're going to have to leave. Because we're I not. There definitely is a re refused service standard. And that I've had that kick in at times where once I'm there, if the yelling continues, then we have to drop the bomb. But unfortunately, we're not obligated to provide service. We have the right to refuse service or, and then we can go from that point forward. Do we involve police? Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been there where I've, I've mentioned to guests that they're welcome to stay elsewhere. If these are, if these accommodations aren't fitting for their needs. Um, and that's always a last resort, but. Um, Such a nice way to say, I'm about to cancel your reservation. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've also had to, you know, politely mention, um, or call out the tone that the guest is using and, and let them know that, Hey, you know, right now I'd like us both to be as respectful as possible. Let's, let's try to be, you know, progressive here. Let's try to work on this together. Um, cause I, I feel like if you're able to sidestep that conversation or that, that heat, um, you can always redirect that, um, into a more positive, uh, framework or channel. I've even seen young workers even pull out an adult and say, I'm your children's age and you're screaming at me. Is that okay? And I was like, wow, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> well, they yeah. probably scream at their children the same way, so they probably really won't care. <laughs> oh, this is All a right. long one. Wow. Dylan, do you want it or do you want me to take it? So the fifth one, arriving before check-in time and expecting your room to be ready. Finally, hotel solution strategist Colleen Carswell wanted to remind everyone that just because you want to check in early doesn't mean it's always possible, and that's not the hotel staffers. Hmm. Yep. So you arrive at seven a.m. Yeah. So Greg, what was that you were saying about the guest that was arriving at midnight? Well, they would arrive after midnight, or they would show up at like two in the morning wanting a room 
but it was a little different because they're like, you know, I told them we're sold out for the night. They would go online, book it for the day of, but not the business day. And I, they don't understand that, you know, you know yeah, you, it's the day of, but your check-in time is not till three. So there's no rooms available. Well, I, I have had where a guest um, will come in from a long road trip. It'll be very early, like 7 or 8 a.m., um, and they'll say, hey, is there anything available? And I'll be honest with them. I'll say, hey, excuse, you know, I apologize right now. We were fully committed the night before. However, um, let me get your information, your numbers registered right here. The first room that's available, I'm going to give you a call. Um, but it's tough because even in the, those scenarios, the first room that's available might, might not be available soon enough. Right. Um, so it's a tough balance to strike. Yeah, you're just dependent no, on not, when your housekeeping starts the day. Sorry, Greg. No, no, go ahead. You're dependent on when your housekeeping starts the day. And even when they start the day, you have stand up, you have clocking in, you have the preparation of your parts. It's there's actually kind of a bulk of time there before we're actually hitting the floors and getting rooms turned. And then you have an actual 30 minutes to 35 minutes to clear that first room. So by the time they, that that first room's clear, it's gonna be sometimes an hour and a half or two hours later. And that's if you don't have a specific room type that you're waiting on. Let's say you're waiting on a suite and you only have five of them and they're all occupied. Or it's a family that needs connecting. Right. Or you need specific I hate, rooms. Yeah, I hate when the connecting comes up at the last moment, as you guys brought up earlier. That's I always tell my staff, if they bring it up at the last moment, bring up adjacent rooms immediately. Because once one connection is, is rented, your connection's dashed. And at the last moment, the odds of your connecting rooms all being open is, is just a matter of gambling. It's not a guarantee. Probability is probably not in your favor. So adjacent rooms is really the best way to go for a short answer without having to look into it. For too long. My difficulty with connecting is also even if it isn't early. So like say it's 3 p.m. on the dot check in time. Um, if you have connecting rooms as a request, it's not always going to be the case that both of the connecting rooms that you're slated for are going to be ready at the same time. Absolutely. Um, so I've had times where I've had to check guests into the first one, but not the second one yet, or where a guest would have to wait up to an hour after check-in time um, due to a late checkout that was granted from the night before. Um, there are a number of scenarios in which your quote unquote guaranteed check in time might not really work out that way. Um, so if you're coming to check into a hotel, you should be prepared um, to not necessarily be in the door at that 3 p.m. mark that it says on the website. Well, a lot of the apps allow you to put an arrival time in as your preferred arrival time well in advance of 3 p.m. I see them as early as 8 a.m. coming through the app as a preferred arrival time. And we have to be very cautious about that and prepare to have a conversation because they feel that's a commitment because they can type it in. And that's right. not a commitment. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it, but it does, what it does do, it is nice that the hotel is aware and, and able to plan your early arrival. Um, Cause I'd rather have a heads up about it as opposed to, you know, sometimes if you're, if you've got the expectation that it hasn't been communicated, um, because then we can try to make preparations. And a lot of the time, preparations can be made. You know, it's not always coming off of a sold out night. And it's um, there are plenty of times where we can grant these requests. The, I think the problem comes in when the expectation hits that it, you know, was a, a done deal. Because um, it's not or, a done deal. Or an inflexibility. It's like you said that the like 7, 8 a.m. arrival, I could offer that person breakfast. And if it's a family, that might situate them for the hour and a half I need. Uh, right. But if they're inflexible, they're saying, no, I've got status. 7 a.m., let me in my special foo-foo room. <laughs> I might be in a rough situation there. I would love the flexibility. Meet me halfway and, and let us both be good guys in this situation uh, or girls. And I'm, always, you know? um, I'm always – whenever um, – I worked at the front desk. It was always nice to offer holding the luggage and giving them recommendations right. and suggestions for things to do in the area. Hey, you know, unfortunately, and I wish we had the room available right now. It's just not available at this time. I know you've got a lot of stuff. I know you just got off a long road trip or, or travel day. 
let me hold on to your things. We've got tags. We can tag your bags, put them in storage. It'll be safe here at the front desk. I've got two, three, four great recommendations for what you can do in the area in the meantime. Um, or feel free to join us at our lobby restaurant or X, Y, Z. Give them options and suggestions um, because a lot of the time that's just what they're needing is a nice to sit down and have a nice cold beverage um, and relax after that travel day. They're looking to decompress after that travel day. And that doesn't necessarily have to be inside of the room. One of the best I ever saw was outside of uh, Icelandic hotel. They had a seating area with a fire pit and they come bring you hot drinks while you wait for your room. Like, <laughs> you're not going to lose in that situation. You are so winning in that situation. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I got to go out to that hotel. Uh, it does help if a guest checks out early, maybe housekeeping and turn the room or breakfast can help. Greg and Tom suggested that you let the hotel know when you check out early. Yeah, we did. I did bring that up because there's guests that have the late checkouts, especially those 4 p.m. checkouts. Um, I think I had a couple of them today. I went to walk some rooms and sure enough, they were empty and they looked like they've been empty for a little while. Um, so it's, it's just always helpful. Let your hotel staff know that or yeah, let them know that you're leaving and uh, we can get in that room and get it ready for the next guest. I'd say also it's important if you're on your app and you're setting up your stay, do not put the late checkout down for like 4 p.m. If you don't need 4 p.m., if you need 2 p.m., put down 2 p.m., please. Yeah. Yeah. Or let's say you put 4 p.m. and you decide, oh, I don't to stay that late. Let somebody know. <laughs> for sure. Right. It helps us out. It's the little things. We're all human. We need help. I want to catch a comment from Zach. Um, he recommends the book Walking Through Anger by Dr. Christian um, Kont. It's a great book to to read and learn how to deal with angry guests. So, I like it. Zach is a first timer uh, watching and following along and um, doing task force. And, and welcome, Zach. Yeah, welcome. I, I yeah. love to see it. It's, it's energizing. Yeah, um, absolutely. So this final one actually reminds me of an, something that I encountered today while I was working. And I texted Greg as soon as I saw it come in because I was like, well, Greg and Kyle, we've got like a group chat. Um, I had received an email from a director of travel for, um, for a travel agency, and I won't say which, which travel agency, um, but they said, um, I'm going to use X for the VIP name, but they said X VIP will likely be arriving at around noon. Um, and so I don't think early check-in will be required, um, hopefully, or I don't think that early check-in will be an issue, hopefully. I felt like, wow, you, you're in the industry you know what everybody's check-in time is. And in your uh, pre-arrival email about this individual that's arriving, um, you're kind of setting the expectation that, well, of course, we'll have early check-in for this person. Or it's going to um, be an issue. Or, or else it's going to be an issue. Or like, I just, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. You know, I feel like when you're working within the industry, you should approach it more of like a simpatico like hey this is the request is it can it be accommodated um it's kind of like um i don't know it's almost like in real estate when when they're telling talking to you as if you've already bought the house um the house hadn't hasn't been bought yet we're not sure what the scenario is going to look like um let's 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 slow down here i am my last celebrity i had this is just uh, uh, off off the current topic but just have to put more of this in. The, they wrote in their special request, celebrity in the room for this week, no newspapers, no media. Please don't tell anybody the celebrity's name. I, was, I, saw, I had to stop and laugh. I said, newspapers, plural? There's one newspaper <laughs> in town. <laughs> and, and I don't think they're going to come out for anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think they realize where they were, right? <laughs> I, should, I, I don't. And I prepared for like the arrival of some SoundCloud rapper, you know, like it's going to be somebody no one's heard of. Yeah. Here's a tip. If you're, listen, anybody can be a very important person. All you have to do is know the right email address and be a very good salesperson and pitch. <laughs> or just being, and, uh, or just be annoying enough to be like, all right, let's just take care of this person. So they leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you are um, adamant enough, you can be a very important person too. Yeah. Yeah, probably not the kind you want to be, but no, you know, no, you no, still, no. You can if, still get your way. That would be a way to be an annoying hotel guest is by 
sending 15 emails to an uh, email address that you found for, you know, a, a member of management and just, yeah, it can, <laughs> there can be a point where it becomes too much. Yeah. I had a guy the other day, a general manager who had an associate reservation and he kept calling asking for me and my staff wouldn't want to connect him unless we knew what he wanted. So they'd ask him, what do you want? I will only talk to Dylan. They said, okay, go ahead and email him. Here's his email uh, address. And he wouldn't email me. So about the fourth call, my staff just said, okay, we're, we're going to have to connect him because he's relentless. And he says, oh, I want to call to cancel a reservation. I'm like, you work in our industry. You are a general manager. And you want to cancel a reservation. And you needed to speak to the general manager to cancel it? I was... Uh, I, I, I had one very similar to that um, when I was working in Oakland, and I, I really kind of took pride in being able to handle everything that kind of came to my desk. I didn't, I didn't like having to pass it on um, because I liked being able to, um, you know, take care of my stuff. And I had a guest that called through that a third-party booking site hadn't given them a refund for their stay. And no matter how well I attempted to explain this to this individual that the hotel was not responsible for the fees that were incurred, he just wouldn't believe me and ended up having to be transferred to our general manager. And I, I like went into the office of my general manager at the time and I was like, hey, I know this is a waste of time. Like, I know this is a stupid one. I'm so sorry. This is what's going on. This is what the person's upset about. Um, and I transferred them through. And they ended up arguing for a good <laughs> <laughs> like 10, 15 minutes. I was surprised. <laughs> I was like, what I think hey. is nice about that is that what makes what makes you an asset is not wanting to let things that come across your plate get passed on if you can answer. I think that's a really good trait to have because you know that people above you have their responsibilities. And truly, when you're a general manager, you get a call and that person's like, oh, I need extra towels in my room. And I asked for the general manager. You're like, no, no, that is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a piece of you advice. You want everybody in line to take care of their responsibilities according to their position because then everything works better. Exactly. And uh, yeah, it is a great trait that Tom has because he kept a lot of things off of my plate because he was reporting directly to me. So I, I love that I could come in the next morning and just know that anything that happened the night before while Tom was there and that he knew about, it was taken care of. And yeah, I, call you that also... type of worker, I call that type of worker a utility player because those utility players can handle so many different facets of the job. And those utility players make your job easier as an executive because that stuff is not coming your way. Like I, I shouldn't send things to the ownership's way. You know, we should have be able to contain things that come to us and if they fit within our skill set we should we should take care of yeah yeah greg if there ever was something you knew you would have a detailed email with highlights red green blue orange and uh, i would have had text messages paragraphs and that's also separated by department that's also kind of a lost art too it's the the you know itemized communication if we get that on a managerial level that's such a blessing because They'll say, okay, here's your, I, I have workers that are like, here are your missed calls. Here, in case you want to compensate them, is their Bonvoy number there? Here's their email address if you want to. Here's a phone number if you want to call them. So I love that because I'm coming in and I'm armed with information. I don't have to ask them any questions. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the best follow up programs I had was when I was at the WIT. And that was because every single at the end of every single shift, through all three shifts, we would send a pass on with all the detailed information with any any small guest issue that happened and say whether they were compensated, they weren't compensated, what was said, like kind of where it resolved if anybody needs to follow up. So when I became front office manager, I would come in in the morning and I knew everything that happened the night before. I knew everything that happened overnight and I was ready to go for when they ask for me or if I needed to just call them and follow up with them before they have to even ask for me or be, you know, if they live the day I can reach them with the needs, you know, apologize or give them a call if, if it was serious enough. So, and what was great too is every morning after our morning standup, the rooms team would all sit together and read over every single issue. And we would 
you know, decide what are action items and what is okay. And, you know, just, and keep moving from there. And that's how we, we just, we took care of our guests and that's you know, why we were as good as we were. I tell my staff that whenever they have a rough interaction to make sure that they read me in on the interaction, I've had some staff members over time say, I hate it when he does that because I feel like I'm going to get in trouble. And thankfully I've had other staff will tell them why is no, I actually want to speak to that guest, resolve that issue. I'm not busy judging my staff member. I want to make sure that issue doesn't carry on, you know, forever. You know, I want that issue to be resolved and I don't want the guests to take it home. And if I can be aware of what's going on, even if they have left the property, they'll talk to them well before it's a review time. Or they contact me by email later on upset about something that I should be aware of. Yep. So going into this, I thought of two of my own um, things that you should be aware of when you're going to a hotel um, to be less burdensome on staff. Um, And my two are, one, um, ignoring hotel policies and procedures. Um, It's not the guest's responsibility to know the hotel's policies. I completely understand that. Um, However, there are common sense rules that should be followed, like your children should be attended if they're at the pool. or can't be at the bar. <laughs> like there's a number of legality things and just kind of common sense policies and procedures that you should just know and do and be a good citizen. Um, because nobody likes to be the bad guy and approach you and let you know how you're violating a clear policy. Um, it's burdensome on the staff. It's burdensome for other guests. It's not a good vibe and you're really just making it a hard time for everybody add one on there for you that goes along with that don't mm-hmm. allow your six-year-olds to run on the treadmills barefoot <laughs> i i hate after having to go in there the pool. after swimming, swimming in the, the pool, pool and then running on the treadmills barefoot for me it's running on the tile floor in the lobby especially when there's inclement weather outside because i am petrified i don't want that child to be injured i don't want my name attached to that injury I want that parent to be an adult and look after their kid. One for me was, and this, I thought that for, for a number of months, I thought that maybe it was a, an issue with um, housekeeping, with doing proper stocking. No, we, even after making sure that everything was properly stocked, I would still have guests leave the pool without drying off and just going straight into the elevator and up to their rooms and causing a big mess on the tile floor. The Nile River going through the lobby. <laughs> it was the Nile River going through the lobby. Exactly. I was like, I couldn't believe it. And I would, I would go to the pool as soon as I see the water on the on the tile floor. I let the uh, um, the houseman know or the public area attendant know. Hey, you guys could come and there's a spill in the lobby. If you could help us wipe it up, I go straight to the pool. And what do I find in the pool? Plenty of towels. Plenty. That oh, it's in the pool. It's in the pool restrooms too. That that river goes and detours right into those. It's like I don't I don't understand. It's not yeah. even comfortable. I don't know why you're doing this. <laughs> um, yeah. And then my my second one was not being considerate of housekeeping. So yes, housekeeping is there to clean the room after you've departed. That's true. Um, however, if you're leaving the room in a state of disarray, uh, leaving things not in a very tidy state, leaving dirty dishes, making a big mess and not taking care of the room. Um, It's going to cause the housekeeping staff to have a more difficult and time consuming task ahead of them. Um, They have to make so many beds a day. They have to bend over so many times a day to pick up trash and other things. It's better to even do the reverse and to already strip the bed for when they come into the room, already have trash cans up on a higher elevation like a nice table or something for them to empty um you want to do the little things to be considerate of the housekeeping staff that's coming after you um or else they're going to come after you (laughs) (laughs) i think i think i've heard that you guys are a bit gangsterly (laughs) i mean we are in chicago i mean al capone stayed at my hotel so yeah do with that what you will um for me i think um I'm going to go back to my front desk days and do not, do not yell at the staff about incidental holds. Almost any, almost every single hotel, almost every single hotel. I know there's some that don't, 
almost every single hotel has some sort of incidental hold that will authorize your card. Know that it's not a charge, <laughs> that it's an authorization. And if you really have any questions about it, pull a ta- page out of Tom's book, call the hotel and ask. I would say also, as often as possible, use your credit card instead of your debit card if you're mm-hmm. concerned about your balances. Yes. Because it'll go back to your credit card faster. Um, and also, don't be don't be concerned or confused if there's an additional authorization after you've racked up so many charges at the hotel. They are going to have to take an additional hold to make sure that they're able to cover everything that you're purchasing. Yes. Um, so w- when you when you know that the deposit is $75, and then you see there's $150 on your card, consider maybe have you already spent up to the deposit or close to the deposit amount? Love it. That's actually a great clip. We're going to market that out to all the uh, hotel potential hotel guests. <laughs> <laughs> For um, me, I, one of the things I had also is uh, how you make your requests. Because I have guests that will stop you when you go to get the blanket, say, and a towel. Okay, blanket and a towel and a toothbrush. Okay, blanket, towel, toothbrush mm-hmm. and a shower cap. I'm like, okay, now, sorry, <laughs> can we? Can you just give me the list? Because <laughs> about the fourth time I, because I hustle when they give it to me, I'm I'm off running. I'm gonna yeah, get you yeah. that blanket. You know, <laughs> we are we're raised in hospitality to fulfill that request quickly. So don't punish us by making us run back to you six times because you're having fun. <laughs> I have to say, even outside of the operations world, this happens because I'm I'm working in sales now, and I was coordinating with a um, with a wedding planner, and they sent me an email and let me know, hey, I've got this uh, room block that I'd like to book coming up. I'm like, great. So I sent her a template with all of these questions on it that go through all the information that I need to set up this room block, and she says um, she answers with just one line none of the questions answered and we we go on to have to have like a five or six email chain in which we learn all of the things that were mentioned in the original email it's like just just go through the original email just right. answer the questions save everybody's we time to. we want to help you let's just let's just get it done let's, let's get, it, get done. it done oh all right well we just hit an hour um I don't know if you had any more, uh, any more, Dylan, before I cut you off. I just feel like I might yeah, have been when, when, when there's When you have a guest who asks for their discount that they can apply to the state after the state. Uh, uh, or, or are the ones that book it, they prepay it through third party and then ask for like a AAA discount <laughs> as they're yeah. checking in. It's like, oh, or they, they want the, they want a different discount. And yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's a good one. Oh, um, booking past a cutoff date on a group block. Ah, and then getting upset that your rate's higher than everybody else's. Yeah, at check-in, everybody else is paying 159. Why do I have to pay 184? And so often they're saying, "I," uh, but I'm with the group, so I need I need to get that group rate. Yeah, that's not how this works. Or for me, I I also get when people. Book with a group, and they say they call in and say, "You know, I can only book this, but I would like to get this." Like, well, you can only get that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what comes with that. That's, those are the services that come with that. I love that. And it, but the other thing with group blocks, um, when you book a wedding block, you're not necessarily booking all your rooms on the same floor together. Keep that in mind too. <laughs> and some people prefer it that way. I've had people checking in with a wedding block that have said, I don't want to be anywhere near <laughs> my family. Yeah. That's fun. Yep. If at all had, possible. Had a bunch of those. So great. Well, Dylan, thank you. Uh, as always, for, having me. for as supporting always. us and always being you know, on. Yeah, this has been a, a super fast hour. Uh, for anybody new that doesn't know Dylan, Dylan, where can they find you, connect with you? Where can they watch all those amazing clips that you put out yeah. um, that I've, I've yeah, been loving? Yeah, uh, please feel free to, to follow me or connect with me on LinkedIn. I do also have uh, Instagram where it says Beaumont in Oregon is my Instagram. But in on LinkedIn, is just Dylan Beaumont. It, you'll all pop up as... Uh, general manager of the Fairfield in Eugene, Oregon. 
go Ducks, as we always see. <laughs> uh, so please feel free to follow me or connect with me. I put out a lot of hospitality content. Um, sometimes I look for just clips that, that encourage. Sometimes I'm just trying to make something that's going to make you day. So hopefully, uh, if you follow or connect with me, I'll give you something that will uh, make it work. No, he, he definitely has. Um, I mean, I've learned so many things about old hotels that you find stuff on. Uh, jump, I actually have to ask you someday where you find this stuff because. <laughs> well, I'll say if you ever look like up such... the hotel history hashtag on LinkedIn, you'll have a lot to read. Um, that's what I file a lot of these things under. And sometimes it's just a pleasure for me to research hotels and see about how the things we do in our modern times come about. Um, a lot of it, it's like you've had your old gambling dens and uh, you had your opiate dens and brothels and forts and all these things evolved into what we provide today. Even, um, you know, like uh, hot spas that were naturally occurring mineral spas gave birth eventually to being uh, a hotel because of that attraction. So, so many of these things uh, evolved mm -hmm. to become hotels. And then you look at, you know, where hotels were positioned over time is they were positioned in rural areas and then along railways and then along motorways. And sometimes it was about where the trails were when we had horses. And then it became where the, the trains were and then it became where the cars were. So a lot of times this research just teaches me a bit about what we do. And, you know, one of the most fulfilling things for me is when uh, Dr. Producer Suzanne uh, takes my material and shares it with her hospitality classes, um, that's so fruitful for me. That's I'm just like, that's that's fantastic. Oh, that's you know? awesome. Yeah, that's and also, I'll say something else is really fruitful. It's like when I know somebody put a ton of effort into a presentation, it goes under notice and I could take a clip and that's going to get like, you know, 10,000 uh, views. I feel like that's 10,000 views more than what it was getting, and it deserved that attention. Like the clips that Kyle did at the page, I felt like those were really good quality uh, lectures. And he had some really nice, uh, poignant moments that should have been shared uh, on a wider scale, right? If I can right. give a little more attention to that, he deserves that, right? So, so many times we have that moment within a podcast or that moment within a lecture, and you're like, damn, that's it. That's it right there. I got to clip that because I want somebody to hear it the way I heard it. Yeah, well, we, we always, uh, I mean, we appreciate not only when you clip our material, but when you clip material from all over the hospitality spectrum, because it really, um, it's, it's, and this is something that I kind of developed as I started working in hotels is realizing that you make the culture. It's not just looking to everybody else to create the culture of the workplace. Oh, this place is terrible because everybody's terrible. No, you make the culture. You are also an example. Even if you're a line level associate, even if you're at the bottom of the totem pole, you're making your manager's day. You're making the day of the other associates that you're working with. Um, and on a wider hospitality scale, Dylan, you're making everybody's day when you post. Well, I'll, uh, I'll say posts. related to that, one of the clips I had took recently was Greg speaking about the culture and it was at the wit, right, Greg? Uh, yes, I believe so. And, and he was speaking about how the value of that culture um, made it to where it's a more valuable hotel than hotels that paid more in the immediate vicinity. It may be up to three or four dollars more per hour, but his hotel was had a better culture and the guests would enjoy, enjoy that more and enjoy being there more because of the culture that hotel had developed, that would create a better situation for guests to stay. And, and it reflected. And that's important. And that was, I mean, I love clipping that because imagine if your hotel has created something that makes you more valuable than a hotel with more resources that's just around the same block. That's uh, pretty incredible. It's, it was literally, the other hotel was literally across the street and probably about twice the size of our hotel. Um, but we, I mean, we were the, we were one of the top double trees in the country. So, and it, it all had to do with the culture and I Service love it. Service drives revenue. Yep. I miss it. it was well, um, Dylan, I fully expect you to clip this 
before uh, after the show is <laughs> over. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something about me. I I don't. I probably won't clip myself. Uh, um, I'm more likely to clip you, Tom. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's just well, how I. That's just how I am. But <laughs> we're looking forward um, to it. I um, I I don't like. Uh, I'm, I'm not like if I'm on a podcast, I probably won't listen to it on playback very much. But um, I'm the same way. I, I won't certainly... listen to myself. Listen, I, I certainly I have will, to will listen take, to myself because uh, I'm making the clips for Hospitality MD now, so I go through all the. Yeah, you guys, you guys have some it. great clips and on the shorts being put up. So good yeah. job on that. Thank, I, thank I really you. I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah we just have, started really taking a focus on it recently, and I think they're starting to do pretty well. So it's good. Yeah, so if you haven't seen them yet, I mean, you probably have seen them now, but if you haven't, yeah, they're so popular. <laughs> yeah, we're we're uh, not standing on chairs yet. As soon as Tom starts standing on chairs, it's gonna take off. It's it's over. It's over it's, for y'all. Once we start. This is this is a lot of practice for next year's Sweet Sixty Conference from Team Trippy, where we <laughs> all have a sixty second segment. We'll be, we'll be very very professional by then. I just yeah. I hope nobody buys me um, these stunt pads so that. I can continue to not stand on chairs. I'm going to show up to click, and they're going to have the stunt pads ready for me. You know, now I have to hope that people are following each episode, because if we do comebacks like this, they're going to either go crazy or they're going to love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to be great. All right. Uh, well, it's been wonderful to have you on the show, Dylan. I'm going to throw up – I'm going to throw out onto the chat. The... <laughs> You're going to what? <laughs> Um, <laughs> go ahead i'm laughing too hard no you're good we aren't even we aren't even drinking by the way this is yeah, friday night yeah. audit yeah exactly this is not friday night audit i got water <laughs> here i don't well i don't know what tom's doing over there he might be doing something after work to de-stress i don't know what he was gonna throw up um but <laughs> but like, this this uh coming week we'll be back on tuesday next thursday february 2nd month before click connect we will have the one and only California, Craig Sullivan on the show uh, for job. the first time. The first time we gonna have him on the show. We were on his show a couple weeks ago. If you haven't seen that yet, head to his page, check it out. Um, oh, that's what Tom was gonna throw up. Uh, he put out the link for the International Hospital Institute um, uh, site to vote for favorite podcasts. We were hoping that we will get some in there. <laughs> Craig throw it up. Um, Hey, you know what? This is we're at the home stretch of the PDF. We're just trying to get get this over we're with. Just trying to get through it. Let the audit take over. Um, uh, we're we're out of here. Thank you all for being here. Great seeing all the first timers. We hope you come back. So um, fun. Yeah, don't let this scare you off. Um, yeah, but it pleasure is pleasure to have you on as always, Dylan. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dylan. Guys, and I look forward to a future appearance down the road. It's just been it's always fun. Oh, Anytime. it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's you coming. can come in whenever you want. Yeah. Well, whenever right. you guys need me, do let me know. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye.